What's up, guys? We're back with yet another episode of What's Next Podcast. Uh, last episode, if you didn't check that out, uh, make sure you go check that out with Darius Miller. It was a great episode. We got another great UK uh, UK guests coming on, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it to you guys yet. Um, what I'm gonna do is just like I did last episode. I'm working on my my my, my songwriting abilities um, here and there. So just don't judge me on this. But 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 this is how I'm gonna introduce our guest for today. So here it goes. All right, I've been working on this for a little bit. So don't judge me. Hopefully this is the better than the Darius Miller episode where I, I wrote his song. So so. Just, just let me know how I do in the comments. Let me know how I do in the comments. What's up, guys? Welcome to the scene where we sit down with stars. Let's intervene. Today's guest is a QB supreme with skills so tight it looks like a dream. Bars. Hailing from Kentucky, homegrown, homegrown pride, his journey has been wild. No need to hide. From Lexington to Tarlington, He's turning the tide with his dad's legacy. He's got the drive. To conquer the field, make defenders dive, calm under pressure, he'll strive and thrive. Bo Allen, ready to make Kroger feel live. Ooh! <laughs> Welcome to the show, my guy. Welcome to the show, man. Uh, thank you all for having me on. Of course. Excited to do this. Of course, man. How how you doing today, man? Doing well. Um, we had a couple workouts this morning, but had no class today, so everything's gone pretty smooth. So I got far. you. I got you. I got you, man. Well, well welcome back, man. You're back in, in Lexington, Kentucky, home Thank hometown. Yep. What's it been like just just to, to be back around friends and family, and then now you you're, you're a Wildcat again? Yeah, it's been nice. Um, it's been a bit of a change. I'm, actually been living at my parents' house for, for, for uh, just one more week, and I'm moving out. I'm out, I'm out of there, so I've been with them quite a bit. How, how's and that been? It's been good. I'm, I'm good at good days, and uh, get, can get a little old. So I got there's, there's a lot of great things about it that I'll miss when I'm out of there. Yeah, uh, it's for good. But um, that's been great being able to, being able to be around some old teammates and new teammates, yeah. and then um, my family and uh, old friends too. It's been awesome. You used to talk about old old teammates uh, and coaching staff as well. Mm-hmm. What's it been like uh, being able to, to to be around those guys? How how have they embraced you, your 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 teammates and and the coaching staff? That's been awesome. Teammates and coaching staff that both embraced me tremendously. From uh, just kind of in the last time I was there, I was more on the younger side of things. I only played two years of football at Kentucky, but for sure. Um, so kind of having a. Uh, this a little bit. Um, I'm much more of a leader than I was when I was when I was here the first time, and um, being able to take those steps the right way. And a lot of these coaches and players have helped me get into those positions as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you you've experienced it. You were a freshman when you you first got here. Now you know you're returning as a senior, so a little bit different for you. Yeah, you you've experienced a, a lot more. Um, I, a lot of people don't know your, your father was also a quarterback mm-hmm. for University of Kentucky. Talk about how uh, uh, had that. How him being a quarterback for UK, how has that influenced you so far? Yeah, I think um, it may surprise some people that for me actually playing football, it, he didn't really, yes, he didn't really push me to do anything. But if I wanted to help or wanted to go throw football, he'd be there immediately. And, and, that, and just kind of that helped throughout my whole life and that kind of advice. And football in life always helped me out tremendously. But um, I think I was, I've been a Kentucky football fan for as long as I can remember, and that's thanks to him. Sure. And uh, but in one way, he never uh, like if I never even played sports, he probably wouldn't have cared. But uh, but I mean, when I would ask for help or assistance, he'd be right there. It helped me a lot. That's awesome. Man. High school and still does. Shout out to him, man. Now now now, be honest with me. What what type of sport parent is he? Is he that? Is he the dad that's that's going crazy in the stance? But well, what, what's going on? What let's do this, bow? Or is he kind of laid back? No, he's he's pretty laid back. Man. I, I've never I don't think I've ever heard him once. And like some people. Like my girlfriend will tell a couple of stories when we were in Texas, and he didn't really do a whole lot. He just kind of stands there and tries to enjoy it, I guess, as much as he can. I know, I know. Uh, some parents, uh, at least my parents, my dad, he was he was a much more laid back, but he had times where he yeah. would, he would get after. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it was always you know you, you get back in the, in the back seat of the car, and you, you know, know. <laughs> yeah. the, the conversation's gonna yeah. be coming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, you know, he's gonna be telling you a little bit. In, in, in basketball, my dad probably got after me more. Oh, was, really? When I was younger, I may have not given as much effort as I should have. That, that had he get on me about that kind of stuff, but um, 
Grew as long as my it. effort was controlled, I think he was pretty pretty happy. Well, grew out of it for sure, man. <laughs> Talked about your dad. Um, well, let's talk about uh, other people who have inspired you to, to get to this level. What, what, who are your some? Who are some of your biggest mm-hmm. inspirations growing up? I'm um, as I've grown older, definitely my mom. She's been there for everything, supported me so much that you don't even like realize until still don't even realize. But it just as you grow older, I think um, the things that you don't really even think about, you understand what your mom's done for you, or my mom's done for me, and all the moms out there in the world. But I, my mom is somebody that's inspired me a lot. Um, outside of my family. I think um, one person that I just can come to mind, I mean, uh, easy, well, not easy, but I said obvious one, like Tom Brady, just all the trials and stuff he's had in his For life sure. and not being, um, I mean, compared to all the great athletes that are out in the world, he wasn't, I guess, a, they, like a, he's not a prototypical kind of athlete yeah. when it comes to in terms of speed and all that sorts of stuff. You um, relate, you, you say it, that you have relationships. Similar, to yeah, that I think somewhat similar. But um, I think, I mean, he's one that always comes to my mind and probably always will. So, cool. Yeah, that's definitely that's that's the goat right there. So that's a, that's a good good uh, uh, someone to look up to. Uh, that's that's awesome, man. I, I want to ask you. You're my first quarterback that I've, I've ever interviewed. I've, I've interviewed linebackers here and there, but you're the you're the very first quarterback. Very very unique position. Uh, but your one thing that really stands out to me is is your calmness. And I, I could sit down next to you. I can see how calm you are. Your personality you just have that calm demeanor. And and it's it's off the field and it's on the field as well. I, I want to ask you. I don't want to say where does it come from for for you. I want to say how have you developed, you know, just being so calm on the field yeah. and even off the field. I think the main thing, um, I guess just there's not, I think, with with in football, I think a quarterback is a great player for other players to lean on when times are either too high or, or, or especially when times are really low. So I think that's probably the main thing when you kind of got to just stay the water. But um, I just want to answer that. That kind of made sense to me. Um, or I kind of, there was a speaker who came and talked to this at um, Kentucky old, about two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And he was talking about a Marcus Aurelius book. He, I, I, didn't, I didn't know who he was, but he's an older, um, older philosoph- like, like a philosophical kind of guy. Yeah. And uh, I never really thought about this, but I started to kind of impact, think about this more in my life. As a quarterback, a quarterback should be like a rock with a whole bunch of waves like hit it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's never going to falter. It's never going to change. Yeah, it's so I, I'm not, I mean, it's good to implement in anybody's life, but for a quarterback and leading a team, I think that's a great thing to go by, too. When did you you start playing for the position quarterback? I think um, probably right around third or fourth grade. Like, I was a bigger kid when I was younger. Yeah. Um, like, uh, people always say my head was big. My head was still big back then. But uh, So I think probably right around third or fourth grade, I started transitioning into that. Because I think people started growing up, like, growing too. And I started being able to throw the ball pretty well. So I kind of started at a young age, mm-hmm. I see. But uh, probably right around there. And then kind of slowly as throughout my career, I kind of guess transitioned to only playing quarterback. For sure. Well, well, what is the, I guess, pros and cons of, of playing that position? Yeah. And the, obviously, uh, I hate to cut you off of pros. I know you just gave me one. You're the rock. You're mm-hmm. somewhat of a leader for the team, of course. But well, I guess can you can break it down, you know, even-sided? What, what are the pros and cons? Yeah, the biggest – the I can't think of much cons if you're, like, the starting – if you're playing. But, I mean, the biggest pros when you get to touch the ball every play. Um, at the end of the day, you probably make the decisions. Like, a coach could call a play, but he, you're, the, you're the one getting the snap. If you're going to throw it out of bounds, you can. Yeah. And uh, – but um, and that's kind of a joke. But um, the the cons really, I mean, you get so selfish in a way of like you don't realize what it's to like to not play quarterback. Like you're touching the ball every play. Like every decision has to go by through you. Right. So I think the biggest cons is when like a quarterback, like if you're a starting quarterback, like I was for four years, and you got to sit for a while, which most people do. Right. I bet that's so much harder for quarterbacks in the other position. It's like a wide receiver. Sometimes there could be four people in on a play. Tight end, there could be two. There's five offensive linemen. More opportunity. Um, sometimes there's two running yeah, backs. Yeah. And uh, I'd say, I mean, the biggest con is like when you are a starter, any level of football, and that and that not being like that for a year. That's a uh, it's something I admire for a lot of people when they can still keep it on, keep it on, keep it on. That and that's what I think every quarterback has to is to. Uh, Still prepare like you're the guy, even when you're not. And then I'll prepare you for your time when that comes. Absolutely, My, I'd say the hardest part is the biggest con is when you're not playing. When you're not here. right, right, yeah. right, right. I, I want to ask you this because the question just popped up in my head, Bo. It's uh, uh the playbook. <laughs> What's the difference from the high school level of the playbook mm-hmm. to the college level? Obviously, 
you yeah. know, once you get to the next level, it, everything is, is more expanded. Mm-hmm. What, what does that look like? I, I was really blessed by a lot of great coaches here. So we, we had some a lot of answers to all sorts of defenses. So I think complexity, we may have had a more complex kind of playbook in high school that prepared me for college. But the biggest thing I would say, it may not be with like the drawings of the playbook. It's just more about the, the knowledge of what goes on in the play. Like if, um, let's say like a defense has given us one certain look, yeah. a coach will prepare me in college to be a slider protection a whole another way. Or can they change the whole play in general? And, um, and that stuff probably still happens in some high school programs, but definitely not as often as it does in college. So it may not be the X's and O's, but more about like the preparation. Preparation. Yeah. I was just saying, dude, it's probably even with more preparation at that college level. Yes. Um, what else is different from the from the, those perspective from high school, college, speed, uh, yes. uh, SEC is is a premier conference, but what else besides speed and, and uh, strike from from the competition level? I What's really. Like one thing I see all the time is like if one person messes up on the play, that's probably gonna show up nine out of ten times. Really? You know, yeah. Like it's like if uh, let's say, like in high school or something, um, like one linebacker or something just busts a play. Just absolutely, like maybe he's supposed to hit one hole downhill or something or stay back in coverage and he does what he's not supposed to do. It felt like in college, even when I'm watching film of another team, like one way or the other, that's gonna be shown. Mm-hmm. Like somebody's gonna capitalize on that. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was probably one Just thing me. I noticed. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> so somehow it's these coaches are so smart, and, and they are in high school too, but it's more of, I guess, the players being keen on uh, I guess an opportunity arising. For sure, like, man. Well, we're, we're here in Lexington Catholic High School, your high school, and shout out to Lexington Catholic for, for, for providing this platform for us and, and being able to do this here. Um, we truly grateful for that absolutely um i i want to i want to touch back a little bit on your your high school days you're, you're a four-year starter um, um you're one of the best quarterbacks in the nation um i, I want to ask you this like what what lessons have you learned um being here at lexington catholic on and off the court yeah um the biggest ones i think i learned was that um the easiest way to gain confidence and for me it was in football but I think for anyone for anything to do is like to have deserved confidence like I remember like when I was a freshman going into like my freshman year of football when I played I didn't think I really worked that or now I realize I didn't really work that hard you know it was kind of I've heard this one before like, uh, <laughs> um, you think you're good and everything but it kind of I remember I got like the last game my true freshman or my freshman year of high school I got hurt and I got a concussion that game but a lot of it was probably because I was so light like I, I can just get Tear it to figure out. Yeah. And um, go over, over that time from freshman to sophomore, junior, and senior year, um, just that hard work absolutely does work. And um, your nice luck and your talent will only take you so far, For sure. no matter whatever you're doing. But that, um, and in football and anything in life, the more confident I am, the best I've always done. And um, but it only, it only really matters with deserved confidence. And I mean, working hard will give you deserved absolutely. confidence. But I think that's the main thing I learned in high school. Absolutely, Bo. Uh, I was just glancing at your jersey right, right behind us. Um, walk me. I want to pick your brain a little bit. What's uh, what's been your favorite memory as a Lexington Catholic Knight? Um, this can be on the field or this can be off the field. I don't know. Yeah. What, what's the favorite memory? <laughs> um, shoot, we were playing a game like I think my senior year, and we were playing. I won the game. We were playing like Tate's Creek, and we were down. Um, <laughs> We were down. It was like they had to score one more touchdown to hit the running clock point. We were getting killed. It was like maybe like thirty-five to seven. I'm not sure what it was, but you ended up coming back and beating them. Or that was a that was a pretty cool moment just from everybody believing in it. Got a got a nice comeback, huh? Yeah, man, man, man. So get to Kentucky. Uh, Obviously, we talked about you know the major differences from high school to the college. Um, you decided to transfer. Mm-hmm. Walk me through your mindset of, of why you decided to transfer. Was it more uh, of having having more opportunity, or was it more of just you know trying to see you know what I can do outside of the SEC? I think opportunity really would be the first thing I would say. Um, I mean, I did it later in the cycle than most people do. Like most people, kind of entered the transfer portal like kind of just <laughs> right it again, like right around that a month ago. But um, really. I saw I was going into the season, or we were about it, it was like middle of July, late July, uh, it was 2022. And um, I was, I mean, like I was going to go into that year uh, to be the second string quarterback, Will was a starter. Right. And um, I was, and I was happy with every single relationship I had at Kentucky, but I was like, just seeing all these like people. And I was like, what if like, 
I thought I'd enjoy football even more again if I could play like what if I could play like right now, you know? And uh I see. Really that um that's what kind of triggered my emotion to do that. And then uh choosing Tarleton State was was awesome. It was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Just to get out there and play again. Um I can't be more thankful for it. I bet if I me mean, if I didn't leave then, I don't know if I would still I don't know if I would have stayed here yeah. up until this year. So um God, like I'm, I bet if I didn't leave, then I probably wouldn't be here still. It's yeah, just kind of yeah. funny how that worked out. Very but, unique story. Yeah, very unique. definitely. Uh, I want to ask you, I know wh- while you were here at uh, UK, correct me if I'm wrong, um, did the coaching staff, did they keep in contact with you? Or was, was Stoops um, kind of giving you advice? That- I like When I left, that's one thing I think Kentucky or Coach Stoops and his whole staff shows their true character in the best way. But, I mean, they helped me so much with leaving, like finding the right people. Finding a system that may work for me, and he wow. like the coaches know so many coaches. And Coach Stoops actually knew our head coach at Charles and uh, Todd Witten, and uh, he helped me make that decision. And then even I mean, so we I mean we kept up, but um, it wasn't at that time. It was never really like about me coming back, which kind of like keep in contact. And but that's one thing. I mean, there's been other players like that where they'll help you out. But I mean, I got the that's something I like to like to include in it when anybody asks me that question. Yeah. That's how special they are. No, for sure. That, that's love. That's definitely yeah. love. <clears throat> yeah, you had some success outside of Kentucky um, when you transferred to Tarleton State. Uh, if, I, if I butchered that, if, I'm sorry, guys. But Tarleton State, um, walk me through, I guess, like, what was that like uh, compared to Kentucky when you got here? Obviously, it's a lot smaller school. Mm-hmm. You know that. Um, talk about the competition-wise. How, how did you adjust, I guess? Yeah, I think um, the – Competition wise, like one thing I saw, and I took a visit there, and I, and I decided to go there. One of the biggest things was like I, I wanted to see what kind of level of football it was. Yeah. And um, the biggest thing that I realized is like most of you, I think, with the transfer portal, but like when you're playing the FCS, like the same level Eastern Kentucky is playing, like it, I, what I would say is those first like eleven guys on the field, the depth is not nearly somewhat similar as to what the depth is like in the Power Five or the SEC. And I know the talent isn't either. But I'm saying the uh, it was it's a lot better than what I thought it was going to be coming from like my first time going out there. Wow. It was like I would say that you I mean you don't have um, the depth isn't there, but like the the first starters, the starters of any team we've played, and and the first guys coming off were some really good football players, and uh, I was definitely like like really surprised in a good way to see that. Um, uh, just talent, out talent, there. Out yeah, there. talent, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure, man. There's a lot of talent that's not, I guess I, I would say not covered. You know, you're not covered yeah. as much, but it's out there. Doesn't get exposed as much. Um, how, how did you grow from that, though? How, how did you grow from from the, the freshman uh, at, at, at University of Kentucky to, to transferring mm-hmm. into Tarleton State? What, how did you grow? I would say I, the biggest way I I grew was just from play. Like you, like Experience. you see, um, like you probably even have weaknesses that you don't even know you had. You see me, I'm really, I mean, I played a little bit, but you haven't started a game like two or three years. You, know you don't saying? know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, uh, um, so I mean, that's the main thing. And you really get to understand what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Like, where do I really need to improve? And um, I'd say that's the biggest thing is that it's a lot easier to analyze what you're really good or really bad at. For sure. And you're playing compared to in practice or not. For sure. Georgia Southern, mm-hmm. um, Ineligible, yes. you, and you end out ineligible to, to, to play over there. Uh, what what was that like? Was that tough for you? Did, did, how do you? I guess like how do you um, how do you react to, to adversity like that? For the first, honestly, like probably two three weeks, maybe the first month, I really was. Uh, like, I mean, I'd call my dad all the time and just be like, I don't, I don't know what I should like. Like I was pretty. I mean, I was upset about it. Um, thinking about what I'm gonna like. Because I mean, I'm like. I obviously wanted to stay there, like I did, but you're yeah. like you're trying to think. There's something we can do. Like there's somewhere I can go. Literally. <laughs> like, like, no, literally. Yeah. yeah. But, so I was kind of, I think, kind of down a little bit for the first month. But after that, um, uh, it was all great things. There's a lot of great people. One thing I got to do was um, I got to be the scout team quarterback, and I uh, so I, I never got to do that before. And it, but that provides provides just so much reps you can have. And if it wasn't for that. Um, it would have been much harder to grow during that time. And uh, I just would have done a whole lot more on my own. But that's something I'm really thankful for. There was a lot of great things I got to take from that. But for sure, one of the biggest was being able to go against the defense down there. Yeah, yeah. you get that experience like mm-hmm. you talked about. Yeah. Man, uh, we're in the off season now. Um, I, I guess, like, what are some things that you're uh, seeking to, to improve on your side of the, the game? Yeah, I, like, 
main thing, um, it's a little bit everywhere, but I'd say the main thing is just consistent. Um, that's the kind of accuracy and develop even more arm strength when you're kind of moving in the pocket, maybe throwing like an off platform throw, just kind of just adding more tools to the toolbox as much as I can. And, um, uh, and definitely overall get better everywhere, but get a little quicker as well. For sure. I, I, I know you're, you're a big leader. Yeah. Obviously your quarterbacks have to be great leaders and, and that, that expands on and off the court. And I think it's going to expand um, after you, you're done playing as well. And that, that may lead into something like coaching. What's your, I guess, what's your game plan? Maybe, you know, are you looking to get into some coaching after you're done playing? I don't want to like, completely say no, but I, if, I, if I had to say like right now, I don't, I don't believe I will coach, but I'm not going to completely chop it off. But uh, um, You're open to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I want to get into just investment management and uh, managing people's money and growing their money. What do, you, what, do. what do you major in? In, in the finance. Oh, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so you definitely have the pathway for the future, man. Um, before I let you go, man, I, I want to ask you, what, what's your best advice for, for anyone? Not, and this doesn't have to be for, you know, we do this every episode. It doesn't have to be for anyone aspiring to, to be a, the next great Tom Brady or anything mm -hmm. like that or, or Bo Allen. Um, what, what's your greatest advice? I'd say my greatest advice is, is wherever you are in your life that you prepare to be the person that you want to be, not the person that you are. Unless you maybe are exactly what you want, but like for me, um, like one thing I would put out there, like if you're a, if you're a, if you have a job and you want to be a CEO one day, prepare like you're the CEO. Don't prepare like you're the person in the job that you're in. You got so to start. start. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so like if you're like a backup quarterback or third string quarterback, prepare and do what you want to be to be the starting quarterback. quarterback. So, exactly. but I guess that may not work in every area of somebody's life, but. I think a lot of young people in a mind it definitely does. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's I was gonna say that's some great advice. You can take it, um take it any any way you you wanna look at it. Um goals and aspirations for your senior season. What what would Yeah, I do at the end of the season I understand I'm the best football player I possibly could have been and same thing with the teammate aspect of it, but that's where I'm keeping it at right now. I'm going to expand more on some goals, but that's my main one. That I okay, got. day by day kind yeah. of got it. I like that. I like that, man. World What's Next podcast, you know I'm going to ask you this, Mo. You, you know it's coming, man. What what you got coming up next? I got um, – I'm hopefully going to be able to go watch this basketball game on Saturday. Hopefully I can – I'm who, going to take a seat. Who, who you got, man? Kentucky. We're playing Alabama. That's what I mean. That's what I, mean. Yeah. I got you, man. I got you. Man. I think they're going to pull it through, man. I think yeah, pull yeah. Through. I think so. Well, that's all we got for today, ladies and gents. Um, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, we deeply appreciate it, Bo. Thank you for so much for thank coming you. on, man. It's been a pleasure getting to hear your story. Um, comment on this episode if you comment your thoughts. I'm giving a give him a follow on all his social medias as well. Shout out to Lexington Catholic for providing this platform as well. That's all we got for today, folks. Make sure you check out the next episode of What's Next podcast.